So my name is Nishan Doshi. Um, you know, I head uh, the Software Engineering Insights product at Harness, uh, and um, was the CEO and founder of Propello, uh, which was acquired by Harness earlier this year. And in my past life, I used to manage a really large engineering team, and we had many challenges. You know, if I if I sort of um, go back in time, some of these challenges were uh, essentially taking a long time to get code to customers, um, context switching, uh, priorities changing every now and then, um, you know, developers working what seems to be just in this tech, sort of tech debt world, just you know, doing break fixes and, and spending most of their time uh, on non, uh, non, you know, I would say not innovative work, but just sort of like really keeping the lights on. And, and you know, this, this story sort of uh, is something that I hear very often from a lot of different customers. And one thing that sort of really got us out of that sort of uh, phase was just every single day improving. So this journey of continuous improvement is really what sort of got us out of that mess into a more sort of um, uh, more innovative path, more, more a path where we could sort of really look forward to that excellence uh, that Jyoti spoke about. Now, you know, as I said, continuous improvement is really what gets you uh, to a better outcome. And if you think about continuous improvement, um, you, you need to know where to improve, how to improve, what to improve. And you, you really need to get that sort of, that insights and, and data um, from two sources. You need to get that from your qualitative sources, so that could be your developers, your scrum masters, your, your managers, your leadership. And you need to get, get that data from machines, like from, from the tools that you're using. And when you get these two data sources together, you can really understand what's going on. You can understand like where things are broken, what's going on. And, and I, I see this world as sort of two pieces, right? You have the metrics that allow want to understand where you are and then help you track progress. And then there's insights which actually tell you why things are the way that they are, right? Like why, the, why is the metric down or why the metric is up? So it's really these two pieces that, that drive that. And if you kind of work on this continuous improvement journey, that sort of leads to engineering excellence. And you know, one thing that, that sort of comes up very often when I talk to engineering leaders is what is engineering excellence, right? It's, it's great we're improving every single day, but what's the North Star? What's the goal? Like, where are we headed? And for that, uh, you know, we really asked these 300 plus engineering leaders for help. So what we did is about six months back, we set up an organization called Engineering Excellence Collective. And this collective is a group of 300 plus uh, engineering leaders, CTOs, VPs of engineering, across a lot of different companies, a lot of different industries, across the globe, actually. And it started with a very small group, about seven to eight people, uh, in a workshop setting, where we started thinking about, like, okay, we, we, you know, we are all improving in our own way, but what does excellence look like? And and this group sort of like now is, uh, is about 300 people. It's, it's free for any leader to join. Um, and we meet monthly. We meet in terms of uh, we have dinners, we have workshops, we have online events. And the goal is really to kind of understand how to move the needle forward and how do you codify best practices. And one of the things that this group really, you know, I'm, I'm, a lot of you are here from the group itself, and, and one of the things that this group did was to actually come up with a maturity model. And this maturity model is really a guidepost for leaders like myself to kind of look at it and say like, okay, here's, here's where we are, but here's where we need to move to. And you had a lot of like maturity models, like you, had, you have Space, you have Dora, which are all great, but they don't really tell you how do you get to sort of like, you know, excellence. Uh, and that's really what we were after, is like what tools, what capabilities do you need to implement um, to get to that excellence? And this group 
came up with the maturity model. The maturity model has about 11 dimensions, and it, it goes all the way from your planning and requirements all the way to sort of learning and development. Um, and that's something that has been some, something that we're really passionate about, and we just launched this uh, today. Uh, so it's publicly available. You can go to engineeringx.org. Uh, it's it's free, to, free for anyone to use. You can download the model and consume this model as a guide, guideline, guidepost within your organization. Now, we went one step further than this. What we did is we took the model, and at Harness, we built an assessment based on the model. So the model is actually released by Engineering X, which is, which is public, and anyone can join it, anyone can contribute to it. Uh, I'll encourage everyone here to sort of actually uh, if you're passionate about engineering excellence, to join that initiative. And the assessment is, is really what sort of like is the outcome of the model. So what we did is we took the model and we built an assessment on top of that model. And these, this assessment can be taken by, by anyone, any, any of your team members. Um, uh, and this, this is really a quick sort of what I call a quick assessment to understand your maturity in 11 of those dimensions, right? So those 11 dimensions, you can get a score, and the score would tell you what, where you are compared to the rest of the industry, and you know, what do you need to do in a very prescriptive way to get your maturity up? So you might be like, let's say, you know, 20 points on your build processes. What do you need? What capability do you need to implement whether it's from Harness, whether it's from someone else, uh, to get it from 20 to 50. And that's really what we're sort of getting engineering teams to kind of understand across the you know, broad spe spectrum of the work that they do is where are they in terms of maturity and what do they need to do. Now, we've been sort of like um, you know, doing a test drive for these assessments. And uh, you know, we, we collected data from about 100 plus assess, you know, companies, and we analyzed that. And today I'm gonna actually reveal or give you a glimpse of like, what we see as the maturity of, of the overall industry. Um, again, it's a subset of only 50 companies, uh, but it gives you a good sort of spectrum of like, or a good understanding of where things are uh, with respect to these 11 dimensions. Now, um, what we, what we anal when we analyze and what we sort of like um, uh, really um, came up with is um, the, the sort of maturity curve, right? And um, it, it closely resembles a hype cycle curve, but you can see that on the top are practices and capabilities that are really mature when we sort of polled all these organizations. So you can see in incident management, for example, there's a lot of money and resources that have been invested in incident management over the last few years. So the 50 odd companies that we sort of assessed, they scored really high on that, that sort of like capability. But you can see that you know, the, the, the code to release capabilities, they're still maturing in most companies. Um, most of them are at you know, uh, level two, so we have three levels, and they're still maturing uh, as we sort of like looked at these 50 companies. The low maturity capabilities are really the newer sort of aspects of software development. We, we just launched a module called Internal Developer Portal, which helps you with one of these capabilities, which is discovery, discovering and documentation, right? Discoverability and documentation. So how do you get your developers not to kind of spend time finding things? Um, so these are sort of capabilities that we see most companies at level one, and, and, and that's something that we think is gonna sort of uh, be really important uh, in, the, in, the, in the next few years. Now, um, I just wanna double click on this a little bit. So like, if you think about sort of like one facet, which is continuous deployments, and we, we looked at sort of what are the maturity capabilities that, that sort of, constitute a mature organization which has mature con continuous deployment processes. And the, what, what the model came up with is really you know, phase deployments, um, capabilities like deployment pipelines, automated rollback, feature flags. And these are really important capabilities. If you're not doing these, capa you, know, or you don't have them in your stack, 
you're probably doing manual deploys or, or semi-manual deploys. And that can cost a lot of developer toil. It can cost a lot of waste. Like, you know, the average developer hours wasted for a team of about seven people is about 2,400 hours uh, doing manual or you know, semi-manual deployments. And then you can see like this broken by different industries. And, and one thing that sort of caught our attention is really the financial industry is definitely lagging compared to media and tech. Media seems to be you know, uh, the one sort of moving the ball forward. Um, and that's, that's something that I've seen consistently across like CI and CD. Um, they definitely need to release faster. So they've automated a lot of that stuff. The next one is continuous integration. Again, um, you know, test intelligence is really the core aspect when it comes to faster builds. And uh, not testing everything, but just testing, doing smart test execution. And, and, the, and, and sort of templatizing these pipelines, having gates in these pipelines. And not surprisingly, you can see that healthcare has, has really, um, it, 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 it's really, uh, you know, pretty mature when it comes to sort of like actually um, gated pipelines, right? Um, and again, media is the one sort of that's leading the way uh, in, in CI. Um, so yeah, th these are some sort of capabilities and I just wanted to give you a glimpse of what we can uncover at an aggregate level. Of course, we, we can actually do these assessments and we do these assessments at a company level. So you get an understanding of where you score at, at for your company uh, and then you know, maybe different business units within your company. This assessment is free to take. It's available on Engineering X, and uh, actually we have a you know, booth outside, so if you're interested, please uh, stop by the Software Engineering Insights uh, booth, and we can, we can guide you to where you can take these assessments. They're free to take, they take about 10 minutes, and give you a really good understanding of where you are and what are some of the gaps you have in your maturity. Now, the assessment, again, is step number one when it comes to kind of excellence, right? You get an understanding of where you are, what the gaps are. But the next step is really um, getting a more deeper understanding uh, from quantitative data sources, so from your tools, from your Jira, from your Git, from your CI, from your CD, and, and taking that next step into understanding where, what, what the metrics are telling you, what the insights are telling you. And that's, that's where software engineering insights come, comes in. Software Engineering Insights is a module uh, within the Harness platform. And what, what it does is it really connects to all your data sources and correlates that data to unlock actionable insights and actionable metrics. And then as you sort of like get into the Software Engineering Insights world, you can start understanding what to transform uh, because you now have the assessment, which is, which is sort of like a broad assessment on all the capabilities you're missing, and then you have a deep dive view into where the problems are, and at a team level, at an individual level, maybe at a tool level, maybe at a process level. So you can understand what's going on, and you can start making these changes, and it's a cyclical loop. It's a cyclical loop of improvement, and that's really what gets you to engineering excellence. Now, um, I'm gonna just, show you a little bit of what Software Engineering Insights can offer. And you know, what, what we do is really start with the Dora metrics uh, and other frameworks like Space, and we can get an end-to-end -end view all the way from your uh, you know, ticketing systems to your, to your source code and, that, and to your CI and CD and really understand what the end-to-end -end lead time is, what your change failure rate is, can get an understanding of like where are your engineers spending time? What are they spending time in innovation? Are they spending time in keeping the lights on? Like where is time sort of being allocated? Where are engineers being allocated? And this is really important. As I talk to most engineering organizations, this is one thing in this day and age that every single leader needs to present to their boards, to their to their CEOs on where time is sort of getting spent, what the investment is. We can help with really getting planning and predictability uh, you know, to, to, a, to a much better state. I mean, who here hasn't seen a missed deadline, right? And, 
who hasn't seen a consistently <laughs> missing deadlines. And this is something that we can really help teams understand where uh, is, is it really requirements that they're missing? Is it estimations that, that are sort of like really not going well? Like what, what is the root cause of not sort of being predictable? And last but not the least is really helping engineering teams understand their team's productivity, but also helping them boost that, helping them with, you know, um, uh, understanding where the problems are at the team level and, ha and, and having those conversations with those teams. Um, so with that, um, you know, again, SEI gives you the ability to get this uh, data from a quantitative aspect. And with the assessments alongside with SEI, you can put these two together and start improving every day to get to excellence. Um, if you're interested to learn more, uh, you can, you can you know, again, take the assessment. Uh, it, it's about a 10 minute assessment. And do come to our booth outside to see a demo of Software Engineering Insights. And then we can tell you more about sort of like the state of uh, the maturity of you know, where, where these benchmarks are, but at the same time, how we can help you kind of get to that excellence. Um, so with that, thank you so much.